Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining Masa University's uh, special talk, special Masa special guest talk uh, event. Uh, we are here to hear Dr. Hari Sita, who is a uh, professor and director of Center of Excellence A and Robotics, uh, VIT AP University. Dr. Hari Sita comes with a vast experience in the field of engineering. Dr. Hari Sita obtained her master's degree from National Institute of Technology, formerly known as REC, Warangal, and obtained MPhil as well as PhD from School of Computer Science and Engineering, Vellore Institute of Technology. Her MPhil work was based on application of data mining, short up electric load prediction. She worked large data classification during her PhD. She has research interest in the field of pattern recognition, data mining, text mining, and machine learning. She received the best paper award from, from, for the paper entitled on improving the generalization of SVM classification in the fifth international conference on information processing held at Bangalore. Currently, Dr. Professor Dr. Hari Sita is, uh, is a Director of Center of Excellence AI and Robotics at VIT, Valor Institute of Technology, AP Universities near Vijayawada, India. We cordially from the Research, Innovation and Enterprise Committee to please give her lecture. Uh, Prof. Dr. Harisita, the stage is yours. Yeah. You can start sharing yeah. your screen. Thank yeah. you very Thank much. Thank you, Dr. Kranti and uh, Thank you, Dr. Srikal Chakravarti Garu, for uh, welcoming me and giving me an opportunity to uh, handle the session in your as a part of your research and innovation team for ha on the topic of handling high-dimensional data. So these days, uh, we all know that machine learning, data mining techniques are uh, being applied in each and every field of uh, science and engineering, even including uh, your healthcare analysis and other things so today i'm just going to give a glance about uh, what, where uh, we generally find uh, the application of uh, uh, high dimensional data and uh, how can we go about it and how do we handle the problems that are arise due to high dimensional data so mainly before i start my lecture i would just uh, like to give a brief idea on various tasks of machine learning the, so one of the most important tasks of machine learning is classification uh, we all know the general meaning of classification as uh, a task that uh, actually assigns patterns uh, of any data set into a predefined categories so there are various popular machine learning methods like k nearest neighborhood decision trees neural networks adabus support vector machine and so on. Here I'm showing in the figure a small example where uh, we have two uh, features, height and weight. So that means this is a two dimensional uh, uh, data set. And uh, we are going to, the line here separates uh, two uh, sets of uh, people. That is uh, those who are ballet dancers and the other one is rugby player. Now, the task for the machine learning uh, problem would be like this, that uh, the white uh, color circle uh, is a test pattern. Once the model is built, we have to decide whether he's a rugby dancer or a ballet dancer. So if he falls into the class of green circles, then uh, he would be a rugby player. Otherwise, he would be a ballet dancer. So to determine this, we are choosing height and weight. So all the rugby players are uh, having... Uh, more weight when compared to ballet dancers. So ballet dancers are uh, less in weight, but uh, they are tall enough. So these features allows us to discriminate these two type of uh, uh, players or ballet dancers. So we actually try to classify the samples given in a particular data set based on the features. So the uh, whatever the features here, we have collected only two features. One is height and weight. So let us see what is the classification process. So okay, we get a particular data set. We divide it into two parts. One is training samples and the other one is testing samples. So say, suppose we had a data set for a cancer patients or data set for 
uh, say uh, we have a data set related to any kind of a healthcare disease, then we divide them uh, into two uh, sets. One is training set and the other one is testing set. Maybe 80-20 ratio or 60-40 ratio and so on. So we use these training samples and we apply a classification algorithm to build a classifier model. And this classification algorithm could be any one of those that I have shown earlier, like a nearest neighbor classifier or support vector machine classifier. Uh, and uh, it could be add a boost and so on. Once we build a classifier model, whenever we give a, a testing sample, that means an unseen sample by the model, then the model will predict uh, to which category it belongs to. So if you had a set of uh, patients data, maybe suffering from uh, breast cancer or anything, where there could be patients who are uh, normal uh, or they are benign and some may be malignant. So based on the features that we had about those patients, if we train a model, then whenever a new patient comes, because already we have built a classifier model, now, whatever the test we conduct uh, on that patient, if we give those values as test set to the classifier model, then uh, it will predict whether the patient has a disease or not. That's how machine learning uh, model uh, like classification or uh, can be used even in healthcare analysis. So there are various other examples for classification like you, like as I said now, to predict tumor cells, whether they are benign or malignant and the classifying credit card transactions, uh, whether there are any fraudulent transactions. And you can also predict uh, the structures of protein. And uh, even if they are applicable in finance and uh, uh, weather prediction or uh, for uh, sports and so on. So in almost all fields of science and engineering, uh, this machine learning tasks are applicable. Now, why we uh, feel that the uh, necessity is there for high dimensional data analysis. So the recent advancement in the technology has made uh, the huge, humongous amount of data to be available because of various uh, advancements in sensor technologies. So today we are not only collecting more samples, but also we collect various number of variables or features or dimensions that describe each pattern. So today, if I go to a hospital, even uh, the doctor will prescribe many tests for us. So each test result would be one feature to predict a disease. So like that, because of the advancements in the technology, various types of tests can be performed. Or even uh, if you take uh, any kind of, a, uh, say suppose for the example of a credit fraud uh, detection. So whatever the transactions would have been made by the person, so many features can be collected and they would be analyzing the transaction history to determine whether he's a fraudulent customer or not. So in that way, today we are able to collect not only more number of samples, but also more number of features that describe each uh, sample or each pattern. So the automatic and systematic collection of every finer detail of each and every sample that we collect has led to high dimensional data. Now, what is dimensionality? So normally we represent a data set in terms of rows and columns. Uh, and uh, the input variables are nothing but the dimensions or the columns that describe each of these uh, samples. And the rows represent the sample, the columns represent the dimensions. So high dimensional data refers to such a data set where the number of features is much, much larger than the number of samples. So normally the performance of all the machine learning algorithms degrade whenever they find the high dimensional data sets and it is called as curse of dimensionality and why it is so we'll see now so what could be the problems due to high dimensionality so the performance of all the supervised learning l methods supervised learning is classification is one such example uh, they suffer from curse of dimensionality because they expect that when the dimensionality is large, even the number of samples should be large enough, then only they can uh, be more accurate. And the other part is that the complexity of the training algorithm, it becomes a bottleneck. And also there could be, because we are collecting so many features, sometimes there could be noisy features which would actually give, give wrong results or less accuracy can be obtained. 
and sometimes there are certain distance measures that we use to classify these samples as in case of k nearest neighborhood uh, where the relative distance among the samples becomes uniform and we cannot distinguish between a farther sample and the closest sample so the distinct the distance actually will lose its meaning so we cannot actually classify and because of high dimensionality sometimes all these uh, conventional algorithms needs the data to be present in the main memory for processing and because when the dimensionality is very large it is not uh, we cannot fit the entire data into main memory so these are some problems and uh, to better explain you the first of dimensionality i'm taking this example let us consider that there are three patterns where we need to classify like i have shown uh, some uh, objects in red color some objects in green and some objects in blue color so say suppose i had only a single feature to distinguish these three samples and uh, i actually assume that let there are uh, three bins and uh, actually in each bin there are three samples so if i take like that the ratio of examples for each class and bin are to be predicted and here we have seen that when i have considered only a single sample there is so much of overlap if you see here the green and blue objects are getting overlap so if i try to incorporate one more feature such that i can better classify them such that uh, only red will be in one bin and only greens will come into one bin only three blue objects will go into one bin then what happens is when once i increase the uh, features so here i can show you when i have fixed number of features just as i had earlier say suppose here in the second figure you can see i have added one more feature x2 and there are only the same number of samples when there are constant number of example they become uh, like they become sparse okay so what happens is each blue object is going into one particular square diagram here and actually if i try to maintain the density of samples to be same in each square part then that means i need at least three objects in each square then what happens is the number of samples should increase so choosing to maintain the density increases the number of examples which were originally 9 to 27 and choosing to maintain the number of examples uh, same would result in a scatter plot that actually makes it sparse so here if i take three dimensional figure then the scatter plot becomes more sparse and it is almost empty so this is the problem with high dimensionality so that's why actually we call it as curse of dimensionality because this figure shows you this graph that as the dimensionality of the data set increases the classifier performance would degrade it slowly increases and then falls off so after certain point the with increase in dimensionality the classifier performance will degrade so this is called as curse of dimensionality so why we should go for dimensionality reduction so because we have seen that too many features uh, will lead to actually uh, degradation in the classifier performance and also some features may be irrelevant and also it is difficult to visualize all the high dimensional data and in order to improve the prediction performance of the classifier as well as complexity could be reduced and we can represent the data in such a way that uh, we won't lose any information even in low dimension so we are going to study some of those uh, techniques now so the main objective is to choose an optimum set of features of low dimensionality and we still improve the performance of machine learning methods so how can we do this so we can reduce dimensionality by using feature extraction method or by using feature selection method so there are two methods one is feature extraction the other one is feature selection so in case of feature extraction method we find a set of new features by mapping them from the existing features then the mapping could be either linear or non linear so here if you take an object x which consists of n featured vector represented by x1 x2 xn then we are mapping by applying function f of x in such a way that we get uh, the same object represented as y with only k features where k is very much less than n and there is another procedure called as feature selection where 
we choose only those relevant features by applying certain uh, filter methods or wrapper methods such that we can get uh, less dimensional uh, data. So here we all understand how a sample is represented. If you take any sample X, it is represented as a vector with N components where each of the component represents one feature. Maybe in terms of healthcare, we say that each feature represents one of the tests performed on the patient. So here we can actually represent all these features collected for a particular patient. Say suppose there is a patient X and if you have measured BP, heart rate or blood test, whatever, each one represents one feature. So like that, we can have N tests performed on the, the patient and N results would be represented as a vector with N components. So assuming that we have only two dimensional vector, then here we represent uh, with uh, a coordinate uh, points like three, four uh, here. And it, it shows that on X axis, uh, we take I vector and on uh, because they are the coordinates that represent this, then we can reconstruct X1 as X transpose I and X2 as X transpose J, where it gives us the projections of this particular sample on these two uh, axes. So we are going to study one method called as principal component analysis that would actually reduce the dimensionality. So here, say suppose there is a vector X that is in N dimensional space with N components, then we are going to find using principal component analysis, the low dimensional vector represented by X cap where the dimensionality is only K, which is very much less than N, but we try to find this vector X cap such that the norm of X minus X cap is minimized. That, that means there would be minimum information loss. So in order to do that, we follow these steps. First one is we compute the sample mean. Then we subtract the mean of this from every sample. And then we find a covariance matrix. And after determining the covariance matrix, we find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And then this uh, actually, as I said, your PCA, this eigenvectors, once we determine the eigenvectors, we choose the largest K eigenvectors such that they are the principal components and that would actually reduce the dimensionality from N dimension to K dimension. So although you had uh, X as your original sample, now we have determined X cap, which is of only K dimensions. So using these steps, that means following, but nowadays tools are available where you can directly use those tools. But what happens behind it is what these steps describe. And once you apply PCA, then you will get a reduced dimensional uh, data. Once you get the data, we apply the reduced dimensional data to any classifier. So we get, again, after reducing the dimensionality, we take training sample and testing sample and we build the model. Once we build the model, we will test with the testing data. If the accuracy obtained is acceptable, then we will roll out the model in real time. So uh, let me share a screen that actually shows you the example of this particular PCA. One minute. I'm sharing the screen again because I'm moving it to other screen. So here I have taken a data set that actually had 18 features. OK, this is a vehicles data set that actually had uh, compactness, circularity, distance. All these are various features in that data set. But these are the, so the data set here you can see. Can you all see the screen? So here I'm reducing. So when I have actually calculated the accuracy is 
81% in case of 18 features, but I have reduced the features to only 10 by using PCA. So there are methods now and you can use such uh, uh, tools and you can directly apply. And after reducing it to 10 principal components, now the dimensionality is only 10 instead of 18. Now I could obtain the accuracy to 93%. So noisy features when we remove, then the accuracy of the model also increases. Now I'll go back. So we have seen an example on PCA. Now, similarly, we have a latent semantic analysis, which means we can analyze documents or understand the underlying concepts of these documents using LSA. And the main uh, difficulty in finding relevant documents. So whenever you go to Google, when you give a keyword uh, to search for some documents, many uh, documents are generated. So many lakhs of documents are generated. But out of them, user would be interested only in few documents. So finding relevant documents using search keywords is always a difficult task. So LSA actually tries to solve this problem by mapping both the words and the documents into a concept space. So here we consider that every document is represented as a bag of words where the order of the words is not important. And say, suppose you want to talk in terms of concepts, then concepts are nothing but pattern of words that usually appear together in documents. For example, Jaguar could be a car or it could be an animal. So in the context in which it is used, we should be able to distinguish the documents. So if at all we had documents that have the words like Jaguar, car, and speed, then we can understand that it is, the documents are talking about sports cars. But whereas if it appears in a document that talks about hunting or animals or Jaguar, then it is referring to Jaguar animal. So in LSA based uh, techniques, words are used in the same context, tend to have similar meanings. Based on this principle, LSA works. So we are going to see how LSA or latent semantic indexing is used along with singular value decomposition. So advantages of this latent semantic analysis is that multiple words that have similar meanings can also be uh, applied as well as words that have more than one meaning that is called as polysemy. So it ha normally we face these two constraints in any kind of a Boolean keyword queries that is synonymy and polysemy. So text normally uh, do not appear in any sentence in the form that makes LSA to be more effective. So it can work even with less it can be working with free form nodes, email content, web content. So it need not be only in sentence form, but LSA works with all kinds of tests, even on Twitter uh, messages, even on social media messages, Facebook messages to classify them into various groups, LSA can be applied. So LSA is used to perform automated document categorization as well as clustering. And uh, we are now going to demonstrate one small example how we can use LSA. And before that, I give an, a brief idea on singular value decomposition. Now, if I have a term by document matrix represented by A, and which consists of M documents and N terms, okay, then by applying SVD, we can get three matrices, U, sigma, and V transpose, and the diagonal entries of sigma are said to be singular values of m. So the m columns of u and n columns of v are called left singular and right singular vectors of a respectively. Now, what is meant by rank of a matrix? So the column rank of a matrix is nothing but how many independent column vectors are available in a. Similarly, row rank is how many independent rows are present in a. So this tells us the rank of a matrix. So the rank of a matrix could be determined either as column rank or as row rank as both are equal. Now, here, how we are reducing dimensionality is shown pictorially. 
if a is the original matrix then we are getting u sigma v transpose the shaded portion if it is removed then the dimensionality gets reduced and on further apply, applying u sigma v transpose product we get a in a lower dimension so that is the linear independent vectors that determine a get reduced that is how we are actually reducing the rank and hence the dimensionality of matrix a so how do we determine uh, the rank to which the original matrix has to be reduced is given by frobenius norm that means we have to choose the rank or uh, to which it can be reduced in such a way that the loss a minus x that means to which you have reduced should be lower so you have to choose it to be minimum so to that k value you can reduce the rank now let us see a small example using lsi suppose we have a collection of documents represented by d1 d2 d3 where d1 is one document but because it is only an example i have taken a single sentence here that represents shipment of gold damaged in a fire that is the sentence that document d1 has document d2 has delivery of silver arrived in a silver truck and document d3 has shipment of gold arrived in a truck these are the three sentences in each of this uh, documents respectively now generally we remove the stop words stop words and we remove uh, the frequently occurring words like a of in and all those but here we are not applying all that because we are only uh, taking it as a single sentence now how do we try to use latent semantic analysis to rank these documents based on a given query gold silver truck this is the query given say suppose you have used this query and you want to find a document that is more relevant to this query how do you generate it so let us uh, see that in actually when i say a term a term document matrix a now first column represents document d1 second document uh, is rep is represented by column d2 and here the third column represents document d3 now there are terms like a arrived damage all these are individual tokens in the sentences that we had uh, in document d1 d2 d3 now a appears in each document once so here you can see a appears here a appears here a appears here so like that depending on how many times each term would have occurred in each document these values are represented in the matrix so arrived appears in document d1 arrived word is not there but it appears in both second document and third document that's why we are representing corresponding to arrived here in d1 we are representing it as 0 in d2 we represent it as 1 and in d3 we represent it as 1 similarly if you take silver silver appeared in document d2 twice so here delivery of silver arrived in a silver truck so two times it appeared so this is represented twice in d2 document whereas it was not appearing in d1 and d3 so it is represented by zero so a represents term by document that is why we call it as t by d matrix and it tells us how many times each term occurs in each document the frequency of each term in each document now corresponding to the same terms in the query we had only three terms so q is represented uh, having one for gold one for silver and one for truck so we are converting the english like language statements also into a matrix form such that we can apply these technologies and we can derive the documents that would be more relevant to the user query so here we then decompose the given a matrix into usb because in real time a would be very large so we are trying to reduce the dimensionality or by reducing the rank of a now after we got u s and v here we thought that we 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 get u as 3 by 3 uh, like how many terms are there and uh, s is the singular valued matrix so here you see only diagonal elements are present and uh, v is uh, representing uh, this matrix but that shows about the documents so v transpose always represents the documents now if at all i want a rank to approximation so we have to keep only first two columns of u and first two rows of v so here also first two rows of s 
So we are eliminating the third row and third column in each of these matrices. So now it is reduced to two dimensionality. Now we consider uh, the new document vectors like this D1 has only two features, D2 also has two features, D3 also has two features. Now the given query is now applied in such a way on matrix U and the singular value using this formula, Q transpose UK SK inverse. Then your query, because we have to even convert the given query also into a two-dimensional vector. So after doing this, we get query also into two-dimensional form. Now we are going to find relevant documents for the given query using cosine similarity. And cosine similarity is given by Q dot D by norm Q by and into norm D. So using that, we get these values. Now, if you rank them in the descending order, you find that document D2 is more relevant to the given query than document D3 and D1. So that would be shown on the top to the user. So apart from this, there are other techniques that are being applied by Google also, like page ranking algorithm and so on. So this is one small example to show that using uh, dimensionality reduction, we can even apply on text documents to retrieve not only uh, the relevant documents to the user, but also for classifying the documents into various classes or to group them into various uh, uh, groups like that. That means into clusters and so on. Various machine learning models can work there. And uh, this is how we represent even any kind of a natural language document into a vector form and we can convert into a matrix and apply dimensionality reduction techniques. Now we are going to see another method called as non-negative matrix factorization. And given a non-negative matrix, which has n patterns, each pattern is one sample, which has m attributes, features, then NNMF can find non-negative matrices with a rank R, which is much less than the original rank of the data set D. Then uh, where W has n by R uh, and H is of R by M size, then we try to minimize the norm of the difference D minus WH. Always this is uh, like Frobenius norm you have chosen in case of SVD to decide the rank. Here also we try to minimize D minus WH and then we fix R value. So once you get W and H, then you are going to get non-negative factors of D. So the value of the rank R can be selected with a condition that R is less than minimum of N or M, that is where your original data set was of size n by m where n samples and m features are present or by using the formula r is less than nm by n plus m to reduce the dimensionality. Now, say suppose you can apply nmf for topic modeling. So if you have like what I have shown earlier term by document matrix here, then on applying nm uh, like non-negative matrix factorization, then you will get two matrices w and h where W consists of documents. So each column vector tells us uh, like what is the topic distribution in the documents. And here is the H represents terms and the topics that tells us the distribution of terms for each of the topics. So we can actually go for that means topic wise, if you want to group the documents, then you can use this. So here you can actually uh, find out how we can, uh, what are the important topics to which uh, these terms are being uh, uh, modeled and so on. So based on topic, you can actually classify the documents also further. Now I have used, uh, there is a Duke cancer data set in which we had only 44 samples, but the number of features was 7,129. And uh, when I have applied uh, nearest neighbor classifier on this Duke cancer data, then I have got 76.83% of accuracy and also used a linear classifier with the parameters C equal to 2 power minus 5 to 2, 2 power 10, then I got 90% accuracy. So here that means it tells us that uh, the test among the, what does accuracy mean? Accuracy tells us that among the test samples, 90% of them are correctly classified. So whenever there is a uh, acceptable accuracy, then you can roll out the model in real time. So after applying NNMF to the original data, 
here, then I have reduced the rank of this data set to a dimensional T of 9, 12, 15 respectively, and I have obtained these accuracy. So with the 9, when the dimensional T is 9, it has given me more accuracy than compared to the original accuracy in case of nearest neighbor classifier. And in case of linear SVM, with 15 dimensionality instead of 7,129 features, if I had only 15 features, I could get accuracy of 90. So this clearly shows that in the data sets that have uh, noisy features, if we eliminate them, then we get better accuracy by the classification models. Now, I am showing uh, about uh, feature selection now. So as I said, all the previous methods that I have discussed are about feature extraction. And this is about feature selection, where we can apply various uh, supervised and unsupervised techniques to actually find the relevant attributes. Uh, so here, we have wrapper methods uh, where we choose uh, subsets of features, like re using recursive feature elimination method. That is one example where we try to eliminate one by one feature if they are not really contributing to the classification uh, process. And similarly, there are filter methods like you can use correlation uh, techniques, uh, which are uh, popular uh, statistical methods like chi-square and so on. And you can also use uh, feature importance methods like Fisher score. And these, state, these days, uh, explainable artificial intelligence techniques are becoming more popular. Uh, where they are trying to use SHAP method and are going to use uh, line method to understand the importance of each feature. If it contributes to the classification, then only they are including that feature. Otherwise, they remove such features. So there are certain uh, machine learning algorithms like decision trees. By, uh, like they have this intrinsic feature of selecting the relevant features while applying the algorithm itself in building the decision trees to classify them. Now, here I'm going to talk about uh, another method called as Zip's law, where with respect to uh, natural language processing, that is, as I said, in case of documents which consists of various words uh, or terms, then Zip's law states that the collection frequency of i the most common term is proportional to the rank of the term. So that is given by CFI is proportional to 1 by i. Because here he clearly states that the most frequent terms like uh, that occur, the word appears in almost all the documents, but it will not help us in discriminating the documents. Similarly, very less frequent terms uh, that correspond to only uh, maybe say suppose there are some rare diseases and uh, there are very rare documents about it. And uh, if the if it is not able to uh, discriminate among many other diseases, that there are certain rare terms. So those rare terms are also uh, not helpful in discriminating the documents. So in such cases, we go for medium frequent terms using the Zip's law. So we find, we extract these medium frequent terms. So each term is one feature in case of a document. So while extracting medium frequent terms, we are extracting the required number of features. Now, there is a beauty in uh, SVM classifier that when I construct a SVM classifier, then uh, actually SVM classifier is nothing but it uh, is given in the form of f of x is equal to sine of w transpose x plus b, where w represents the weight that actually tries to uh, be altered for depending. That means w is a weight vector that actually constructs a line in case of a two-dimensional data or it helps in constructing a hyperplane to distinguish different patterns that belong to different classes. So if uh, w x plus b, w transpose x plus b is less than or equal to minus one, then the then it represents a negative sample. If it is greater than b one, then it represents a positive sample. So the feature variables that corresponds to zero weights are considered irrelevant because to whatever the feature x if W is associated with zero, then we can we remove such feature from the data set. So we construct a SVM classifier. We observe the weight value. If corresponding to that feature, the weight value is zero, then we remove that feature from the uh, data set. So that is how I have used this up, uh, application. And here you see, I have assigned threshold to zero initially. 
but varying the threshold also we can minimize the number of features so as uh, because whenever the weight is greater than the threshold value only we choose the features corresponding to those weights similarly i have constructed a zips law based svm classifier then i try to merge the weights corresponding to both zips law as well as uh, what i have obtained from linear svm using a parameter alpha then i got a hybrid weight and using that i could show that the classification was much more better so here i have taken uh, three different data sets which are uh, like 20 news all these data set consists of documents and they belong to different classes so here uh, the number of documents were only 1945 but the number of terms that describe each document was 26214 so this is the number of features here number of terms represent number of features so these were the data sets that i have used and we have implemented all of them in matlab and the original uh, accuracies if you see they were like the 78 to uh, for uh, uh, 74 77 like that for various nearest neighbor classifiers and in case of svm 92% like that we have got so this shows the term rank and the collection frequency how it falls the most frequent and the less frequent can be eliminated by choosing only this knee part of the curve that tells us the medium frequent terms so you can see here as i reduce the uh, like if i choose lower frequency and higher frequency ranges and once i fix them then the number of terms get reduced based on the frequency ranges that i choose frequency is nothing but frequency of the term so based on the frequency while we put them in the descending order we get the rank okay based on that i am deciding the number of terms and then you can find how the accuracy was increasing to 93% because with the less number of from 26000 i have reduced the number of terms to 1500 then i could obtain 93% accuracy in case of svm similarly i could get 80% uh, of accuracy in case of 2500 uh, terms so like that by reducing the number of terms we could find uh, with the varying uh, uh, threshold values we could find the uh, various uh, here you see the number of features and the classification accuracy how they are plotted for various types of classifiers with increasing number of features and with the uh, plotted against classification accuracy and here you can find with the weight value increasing then how the number of features varies so we could show that the hybrid method has really given a wonderful uh, classification accuracy see for the first 20 news web group data for nnn classifier where you had 73% and so on we could get 88% and in case of svm it was originally 92 but we could achieve 97% so this is what uh, we can uh, reduce the features and still get appreciable accuracy without losing much information using feature selection methods also other than feature extraction methods that we have seen so this is how uh, the application of dimensionality reduction techniques would be very useful in case of any data set that you take even in real time data sets that you take whether it is in image processing or whether it is in text data or whether it is in a financial data whatever it is they are mostly applicable uh, now i would like to just introduce about uh, the center of excellences that we have at vitap as the director i would like to uh, just uh, briefly introduce what kind of work we are doing here so vitap has three centers of excellence one is artificial intelligence and robotics the other one is internet of things and the other one is cyber security so we had uh, mou with industry like with intel and boston uh, recently and uh, we have uh, equipped well and these are our advisory board members and uh, the kind of uh, infrastructure that we have and these are all various types of uh, ar projects that we are doing because i have converted to pdf this uh, small uh, change has come so tas is a quadruple uh, that can work on any terrain and visu is a visu is a intelligent super utility which is print, printed on a 3d or uh, uh, 
completely 3D printed uh, only in BITAB that was available. And uh, we could, uh, I mean, that we have built completely here in BITAP. And uh, this actually is uh, equipped with both voice and face recognition technology. And the arms and those are powered by high torque servo motors. And it could also try to lift a baby. So this is completely built using 3D printer available in VITAP. And this is uh, of uh, uh, first kind uh, built uh, uh, in-house. Uh, and uh, uh, that is the first robot built uh, in India like this. And this is a, a garment called as Vinci X, uh, which actually tries to monitor the vitals uh, in the body, uh, maybe uh, vitamins and other things. So and later, after collecting the data, we analyze that and we will uh, try to predict uh, even uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, like uh, it would help the physicians to actually uh, detect if uh, there is any problem with the patient and so on. So this is a garment in which uh, it has uh, built in sensors and uh, using that they will try to once you wear the garment, it will collect all the vitals required. Uh, based on various sensors that are attached to the garment. So that is one uh, project called as VinCX. And we also have a project Dante, which is an e-bike that is equipped with state of object detection and uh, integrated with uh, various uh, control features. Uh, and the vehicle can travel over 80 kilometers in uh, once you charge it. And uh, we have Cerebro, which is a mind-controlled wheelchair. So this helps uh, elderly uh, people. Uh, because uh, it actually tries to pick up the EEG signals from the brain and uh, it is processed by a microcontroller which in turn helps in making a decision regarding the motion of the uh, wheelchair. And uh, similarly, there are projects that uh, related to no nudity. That means because today many obscene and indecent images are available on websites. So whenever we install this, then it will try to actually uh, filter them off before it is being shown to the user. And uh, we also use uh, coconut tree detection models uh, as a part of disaster management using image processing and uh, deep learning techniques. And there is something called as Remedic, uh, which is a step towards uh, faster medical treatment for uh, accident victims. Uh, so once you once any uh, person is met with an accident, then the uh, uh, GPS coordinates will uh, uh, actually enable us to help him and uh, these are developed using uh, drones and health monitoring sensors and uh, there is something called as nirvana which is a product classification checkout unit which uses computer vision to identify the products as you actually drop the products uh, from the shelf into the cart there will be a, uh, a camera that actually detects the product details and generates the invoice uh, and the payment and uh, this is uh, something interesting like furniture land, which is an uh, augmented reality application that can be uh, linked with any kind of an online feature, uh, furniture marketplace. Uh, it uh, actually enables you to uh, understand how if you bring your furniture uh, into your uh, uh, place, uh, how it would look like. So you, that uh, understanding it gives you. And there are certain IoT projects also like smart masks which could be obtained at a affordable price uh, using uh, temperature and humidity sensors. And uh, we are also building a design of a, a secure ballot box also using blockchain uh, technology. So there are other uh, uh, like uh, IoT vegetation, uh, smart pest control. And uh, now we are thinking of making a intelligent pacemaker uh, such that because the battery size uh, that is present in the current uh, um, pacemakers are larger in size and they need to be operated and placed and now and then they have to again remove the battery and uh, replace it. So we are trying if we could avoid that in collaboration with some doctors in the city. So these are some projects that are ongoing. So actually uh, VIT AP University is a part of uh, VIT University that is uh, though it is a state private university. VIT University is actually established uh, as the Velour Engineering College in 1984 at Velour, and later it became university in 2001 as a deemed university. 
uh, it has uh, like uh, dr g vishwanathan the uh, the best known parliamentarian uh, is uh, now the chancellor for uh, all these universities and uh, he heads all the other vit branches also we have uh, three branches one at bhopal one at uh, chennai and one at uh, uh, andhra pradesh but uh, vit ap is a state private university okay so these are the details and some of the references hope you would all uh, appreciate the work that uh, is ongoing now in machine learning field and uh, how high dimensionality is uh, actually affecting the machine learning models um, thank you so much for your patient listening thank you thank you so much uh, prof dr hari sita it was a enlightening lecture though uh, being a dentist i may not understand your data so much but uh, we can always uh, appreciate the effort which uh, you all scientists are doing to make our lives easier uh, be it be engineering be it be medicine be it be dentistry physiotherapy or any diagnostic sciences i i think uh, these are what will make our lives easier to do things uh, professionally and personally so i would like to congratulate you on uh, giving a wonderful lecture for all of our audience uh, and it was pleasure listening to you and uh, looking at the potential of projects you are all uh, doing at vit ap i think uh, masa university would definitely be interested in uh, collaborating further to to develop uh, some of the products which can be useful to the entire uh, mankind uh, uh prof shri kumar you would like to join on the join us yeah thank you so much uh, thank you so much uh, dr harisita prof dr harisita for this uh, very nice interesting talk it seems to be the tip of the iceberg and yeah. uh, we always thought that high dimensional data was just another sexy word for statistics mm -hmm. but there is so much more to it uh, you gave good examples like the difference between rugby and uh, rugby players and ballet dancers and later on you went to talk about uh, uh, nirvana furniture land augmented reality and how you plan uh, to propose uh, iot in uh, smart mask pacemaker and even vegetarians and all that so these seem to be like wonderful projects that are really going to make a whole change in the entire nation there we look forward to having uh, collaborations with you in future and maybe we can think of having an mou and some future collaborative projects as well Once again, thank you so much. Saturday is always a day off for everyone, and you took time on Saturday to uh, talk to us. Thank you once again. Thank and, you. And uh, on behalf of Masa University, we would like to offer uh, you a digital certificate. Thank you, and sir. Please accept this digital e certificate. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you sir. Dr. Thank yeah. you, Prof. Pranti, for. Uh, um uh, comparing the session today and for being the main anchor and thanks to masa it and uh, marcom and uh, the ceo's office and uh, all those who have helped make this event a grand success thank you and have a good day thank, thank you, you sir thank you very much